Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. In today's video, this is a long awaited video, we're going to be discussing the costs of our van and what it actually cost us to buy and convert this Mercedes Sprinter into a full time camper van. During the course of our build, we kept hold of every invoice and receipt for every item that we purchased for the van conversion, even down to a box of screws that we bought from a shop down the road and everything is in this lever arch folder. So in here is every single thing we bought off the internet, every invoice, receipt, bill, we kept the whole lot, right down to small receipts. And then what Lou kindly did is took all of these invoices and receipts and has put them into one spreadsheet in Excel on the computer and categorized everything into plumbing materials, gas materials, whether it be timber, electrics, controls, whatever it might be, we've got a subsection for each one. And then we've finally got this sort of complete spreadsheet of costs for the whole van conversion in great detail. And we're going to go through it. Now I'm not going to go through it line item by line item because there was 176 items on the spreadsheet. So I'll save you the boredom of doing that. But what we'll do is we'll just pick out and highlight some key parts of the van build that I think you might be interested in and we'll highlight some of those key costs uh, and we'll go through each of the sections pull out one or two items from each section I'll give you a total for that section and then right at the end of the video obviously we'll give you the total for the whole van build so before we go through those detail costs let's go right back to the beginning where did it originally start what did we do for an initial budget and what was our initial cost? What did we think the van was going to cost us originally compared to what it actually cost us in real life? So I'll go back to my, what I call my van bible. This is my original design book. And if you've been following my videos, you'll have seen this pop up a couple of times. This is where I make all of my sort of sketches, make all my notes, all my research that I've done on the internet, wiring diagrams, to-do lists, sketches of the van layout, everything like that goes in here. So it's got all the information from the original design. And if I look towards the beginning here, I can see our very first budget right at the beginning of the job here. I've listed some of the items that we wanted in the van, uh, where I was going to get them, and then an indication of some costs. And pretty rough now I can see the very first cost here right at the top was for the panel van to buy a second-hand van and I've budgeted four thousand pounds now I was really wrong there um, we after a considerable amount of time looking around on the internet there was no way we were going to buy a decent van for four thousand pounds yes you can buy a van for four thousand pounds but it's probably got very high mileage loads of dents in it and it may have a few rust issues or mechanical problems so I didn't want to buy one that cheap because this was going to be a live-in permanent thing for us I wanted a vehicle that we could rely on so ultimately instantly we had to up our budget on the van straight away and we actually found um, an eight-year-old van it was £6,600 we paid for this Sprinter it was owned by a corporate events company so they used to ferry tables and chairs and marquees and things like that around so it was fairly clean inside and out it had had some repair work done on one of the panels at the back which had been filled and sprayed but it really looked in very good condition uh, mechanically it was sound it had a full service and MOT before we bought it so you know I think we got value for money and in terms of mileage it had 112,000 miles on the clock so for a van, that isn't bad. You know, they can go for a long, long time. So that's where we started. Now, in terms of our total initial budget, as I've just said, we were hoping to spend £4,000 on the van. And in terms of major items and fit out bits and pieces, we were going to spend another 2500 So the total van conversion build cost was going to cost us six and a half grand. So I think we were dreaming really at that stage if I think it was going to come to 
we just didn't have a clue to be fair you know we hadn't done enough research hadn't looked into it hadn't seen what other people had done and i just pulled out some figures of of certain items that i thought we were going to need um, but it was nowhere near realistic so from there there is another cost sheet that i found in this book where i'd obviously spent a bit more time researching and i'd done a bit more of a detailed price list and actually wrote this one up on the computer as well so here we've got a bit of a bigger list of items obviously links to where i was going to buy them from and a few more detailed costs here now this total is considerably more we were six and a half thousand on the original budget this one is fifteen thousand three hundred so more than double what our original budget was and if i look down the list here even some of the items here you know didn't turn out to be correct uh, the interior furniture board and the plywood that we used in the van and my original budget was a thousand pounds that actually doubled um, I've got here a stainless steel sink bowl that I was going to buy off eBay for £25. Well, we didn't do that. We actually bought the Thetford sink and the bowl and everything else that came with it. Um, you know, so that obviously cost me considerably more than that item. Uh, looking further down, I was going to put a wash hand basin in the shower, but I didn't do that. So actually, that's a £90 saving. Um, and then there was another item down the bottom here, the seat cushions here. I didn't actually budget a figure for them at all um, in this budget so and they actually cost us a fair bit of money so you know I didn't even allow that so this 15,300 that's not accurate either so you really do need to have a good idea from the beginning what you're going to put in your van do your research look on the internet look around scour around for decent prices for stuff and have a pretty good idea of what your budget's going to be right from the start so i think initially i was hoping that we could have done it quite frugally on a very very small tight budget but in reality for what we wanted the van for to be a permanent living accommodation and to last us a few years it was very evident that we were going to need to spend a considerable bit more money to make it what it is so let's go through the detail cost sheet of what it actually cost us, highlight some of those items, and then see what it actually come to as a final total. So the van that we actually ended up with was a Mercedes Sprinter. It's a 313 CDI. It's the long wheelbase version, and it's also got the high roof. So I can comfortably stand up inside here, and I've still got two or three inches of spare headroom. I'm 180 centimeters or five foot eleven in height so it was plenty tall enough the long wheelbase sprinter is nearly seven meters long overall and the load space from where the bulkhead would be to the rear doors is 4.3 meters long so it's really long we managed to get a full six foot or 1800 millimeter bed lengthways at the back of our van and still have plenty of space for this generous living area We've got a three-seater bench here. We've obviously got the two-seater swivel chair there and quite a, a large kitchen area and a full wet room as well. So we managed to pack quite a bit into this four and a half metre space. The van had 112,000 miles on the clock. It was eight years old when we bought it. And in the two years that we've been touring around, we've since put another 20,000 miles on it just with regular services. So it has proved to be, you know, really reliable. So the first section in our cost sheet is the appliances for the kitchen. Now we've got a Dometic CRX50 12 volt compressor fridge. We've also got a Thetford XXX oven, which has got three rings on the hob and it's a combined grill and oven underneath that runs on LPG. And then we've got the Thetford Argent sink with the drainer and bowl inset within that. Um, now, all of those appliances, this is where motorhomes and camper vans can be expensive, came to £1,197 just for those appliances. Next item on the cost sheet is anything that was relative to the van. There was quite a few things that we did like fitting these bonded windows. 
we also fitted all new brake discs and brake pads all round and I did a video for that. We also fitted a reversing camera on the back with uh, the colour screen up the front. So the reversing camera kit was £129. All of the brake discs and brake pads I bought from Eurocar Spares, that was £211 for the full four wheels. Obviously I fitted it myself. And then these bonded windows from Van Pimps, they were £100 each for the window kit. And then we got glass for vans actually to do the installation and they charged us £180. I did buy some additional trim to go on the inside, which I think was another £30. So that cost for the windows alone came to £410. So that total section just for van related parts actually comes to £1,096. Next item on the cost sheet was for our roof fans and ventilation. Originally we fitted the fantastic fans and we bought them from America, paid quite a bit for the shipping. They were actually £451 for the two fans. I mean we have since swapped them out for these much nicer Max Fan Deluxe um, which are about £325 each. A little bit more expensive, but they're a much better fan, to be honest. I'm glad we did that swap. So, original budget cost for our build was £476 for the ventilation, because we did have a small cost for a fan for the shower as well. Next category is the solar on the roof. We've got three 160-watt Photonic Universe panels, and... Connected to that, we've got a Tracer 40 amp MPPT charge controller with an MT50 remote display. So for the three solar panels, they came to £465. The 40 amp charge controller, that was £129. And the remote display was £29. In addition to that, we've got three 110 amp hour AGM batteries in the garage they were supplied by Alpha Batteries and they cost £450 for the three batteries. That makes the total for solar generation and storage at £1,125. Now continuing on with controls and electrics we obviously built that distribution panel control panel that's in the garage which enables us to change over from mains hookup to inverter supply and it also houses all of our 230 volt MCBs and our fuse board for the 12 volt electrics. I sourced all of the parts for the internals for that panel, most of it from RS components, um, the box as well, and the whole of that control panel build came to £590 complete. That's with all the components and all the internal wiring. And the final section on the electrics is all of the cabling and all of the clips and everything else that went on with that. All of the sockets, 12 volt sockets, the three pin sockets, the cables for the battery, all of the isolators, the breakers, even the terminal clamps, literally everything to wire the whole van. The Arctic blue cable, the rubber cable, there was, you know, I think 70 odd meters of rubber cable, there was 30 odd meters of the Arctic blue cable, and there was all the crimps and everything else that went with that. There's a whole list of items here, which I'm not gonna go through, but the total for the actual electrical cable and connections was 966 pounds. Let me get on to the build of the van. The first thing we did was insulate the van. I've done a number of really detailed videos on insulation on its thermal properties, how best to use it when you're insulating your van. So please do go and have a look at those if you haven't done already. We obviously used a number of different products. I used PIR board from either Kingspan or Celotex. There was 25 mil in the floor, there was 50 mil in the walls, there's 50 mil in the ceiling. In all of the odd areas, we used a combination of either rock wall or the recycled plastic insulation from Dial, which you get from B&Q. And then on top of everything, we put a vapor barrier, which was a double foil bubble wrap, which we covered everything with. We foil taped all of the joints and edges and seams to make that complete. And that sort of finished our complete insulation within the van. 
and the total for all of the insulation products was £1,109. Now I did over order on some of the PIR, we had a board and a half left over, we had some of the uh, rock wall left over and had loads of stick pins left over because I could only order them as a 500 box. Um, there wasn't anybody at that time who was selling them on the internet. But we made sure that those products were given to other people who are doing their van conversions. So at least it helps somebody else. So the next section on our cost sheet is materials for the actual build in terms of timber, wood and so forth. So obviously we lined the van with a 9mm marine ply. We've built all of the furniture out of this Zebrano furniture board, lightweight furniture board from Moreland. There was a lot of plywood that we used in the carcassing. I put a new 12mm plywood floor down and then there was a lot of timber that we used for structural carcassing. Some 2x2 two two CLS timber from the bench seat. There was 2x2 two two CLS in the garage. We made that petition wall and we did some lining in the garage with that as well. So the Zebrano furniture board by far was the most expensive. It's probably one of the dearest sheets that they do. They do start from plain colours at about £60 a sheet, right up to this Sobrano, which was considerably more. We actually used seven full sheets in the whole van. We also got the 3mm vinyl covered ply, which is on our ceiling from Moreland as well. We had four sheets of that. So the total bill from Moreland was £1,400. And then in terms of marine ply, plywood for the floor, carcassing for the kitchen and so forth, I did spend an additional um, £600 on additional plywood sheets for the rest of the structure of the van. And then other bits and pieces like CLS timber on top of that. The total for materials, build materials, is £2,000. £371. Next we come on to what I've titled as the plumbing side of the van and that does incorporate the heating as well so heating and plumbing so everything to do with the shower, the Truma heater, the ventilation and the water side as well, water pipe work so if I have a quick look down this list it includes items like I say like the Truma heater that was £1,450 for the Truma. And to be honest, I can't recommend it enough. It's been a total game changer in our van. It just makes it so comfortable and so usable. Yeah, I really would recommend fitting one. Included in the plumbing are the tanks underneath. So our 75 litre freshwater tank, our 50 litre grey tank that we got from CAC tanks. Our Thetford C200 cassette toilet and the shower tray that goes with that. That's also in these costs. Our Sureflow 12 volt pump on the water side, the little expansion vessel that goes with that as well, and everything else that goes with the plumbing installation. The total for that whole section comes to £2,589. We have a section on the cost sheet which is just titled Gas. That includes our refillable gas cylinder. We've got an 11 kilogram LPG bottle that was supplied by Gasflow. And the complete kit, including the high pressure hoses and the 30 millibar regulator, that came to £273. As well as the gas, we put a solenoid valve on that, which is a Truma solenoid valve as a safety feature. I've got a switch here in the cab that I can just flick and it shuts a solenoid valve by the gas bottle which instantly turns off all the gas supplied to the whole of the van. So if there was a problem I can simply flick that in here and isolate that completely. That was about £111. I sourced that off the internet. And then the remainder was just some small 8mm copper pipe and a few fittings and some isolating valves and a little manifold. So the total for the gas comes to £465. We have a fairly smallish line item for the lighting in the van. We've got these 12 volt recessed LED lights in the ceiling of the van, which are a touch sensitive light. You simply just touch the bezel and they come on. We've got a number of those down the middle of the van. In the kitchen, we've got a recessed LED strip light, which is cut into the underside of the cabinet. And it's got an aluminium profile 
and the LED tape is stuck into that profile with a little diffuser over the top. And it's very similar to the ones that we've got here in the underside of these wall cupboards. There's an aluminium track here, the LED coloured tape is inside there and a little diffuser over the top. So all of those lights, the track, the diffusers, that all came to £180. The next section on our cost sheet is to do with all the soft furnishings. The first item on that was our mattress. We got it specially made from custom sized beds. You give them the dimensions that you need, they can do odd shapes as well and literally within a couple of days they'll construct a memory foam mattress with a soft outer covering. It's absolutely fantastic, it's lovely to sleep on. And including an anti-mould sort of air mat that goes underneath the mattress because we've got a solid bed base, that whole thing cost us £299 and it's absolutely fantastic. The mattress is lovely and the turnaround on the service considering it was a bespoke build was literally just a couple of days. Also included in the soft furnishings was our sea. Obviously we've done a video on that when we went down to Cat and she did the upholstery on our seats. So these are a, a two layered foam. We bought this special fabric from Lockharen in Scotland. The tartan here, the McDonald tartan. So that was quite expensive to be honest and we did spend quite a bit of money just on the fabric alone um, without the seat cushions. So a bit of a luxury really, but it was something that we wanted for the van. Also included in that are these curtains that we got from Vanex, which run on these rails. They're like a stretchy fabric. They're black out on the back and different colours on the inside. You can have grey, I believe, royal blue or red, I believe, or black. Um, so they're brilliant, those curtains. And also the cab dividing curtain as well. We've got a curtain that covers where the bulkhead used to be to separate the living area from the cab. And um, that's included in these costs. So the total for all the soft furnishings in the van is £1,979. So we're nearly getting to the end of our cost sheet now and it leaves us with a couple of items, one of which I've just titled sundries. Now what that includes is things like mastic, Sikaflex glue, screws, sandpaper. So when you look down here, the items do sort of add up. And the whole total for sundries and consumables is £371. Now we have included a cost item for tools within our build. Now, I think this is one that maybe you could take out because obviously you've got those tools for life. You know, you can use them on other projects or other builds. So are they relative to just this build? I mean, if you didn't have them originally, then yes, you'd have to buy the tools. Some of them are specialist tools. I bought a little grinder. We bought the little router. We bought the Rivnut tool, it's a specialist tool. The large crimping tool for the battery lugs, that was a specialist tool. I wouldn't have been able to do that without those. And there was quite a few other specialist tools. The trim tool for trimming the edge of these covered doors, you know, when I made these myself. And, and little things like that, you know, specialist tools that just made the job that much easier. You know, when I look down the list, hole saws. I think we bought nearly every single hole saw that Screwfix make. So there's well over a hundred pounds worth of hole saws. Circular saw blades for the table saw and the circular saw. We spent about £150 on circular saw blades. So the total for the tools that we bought for the van was £488. And then the very last item on the sheet is just miscellaneous items. It's items that we didn't think fitted into any of those categories. And it's things like our fire extinguisher, the fire blanket in the kitchen, hazard warning triangles, and the hazard markings on the back of the van, the stickers that we had to put on the rear door to say we carry an LPG, and just small items like that we needed, which were essential, but just mis miscellaneous. And the total for those items was £156. So that completes all the cost summary sheet. And now we just reveal the grand total. So our total spend for materials for this van conversion 
was just a little bit over £15,000. And that doesn't include the cost of the van. The van was £6,600. So the total conversion cost for the van and the build out came to 21700 So I know that figure is a million miles away from our original budget of £6,500. But then we are living in the van full time. This is our house. And we wanted all of those creature comforts. We wanted it to be nice and homely. We wanted to have all the appliances and be able to cook, you know, wash, clean up, watch the TV, or all those sort of things that you'd normally do in your house. We didn't want to have to worry about anything or struggle to survive in this van. We wanted it to be comfortable. And I think we've achieved that. You know, the van looks absolutely spectacular and then we're more than happy with it. And if I look at sort of production motorhomes that are on the market, sprinter van conversions, you would look to be spending a minimum of double what we've spent to get anything anywhere near, you know, this type of fit out and this level of specification. Even I've seen some second hand vans at 45,000 and upwards, you know, so I think we've got an absolute bargain for less than half of what you can buy the equivalent production van. We've got an absolutely fantastic home. Now obviously you can build your van to your own needs and to your own budget. You don't have to go and buy the most expensive furniture board. Um, you don't have to buy the most expensive appliances. You don't have to have you know a lot of solar and loads of batteries and you can do it a lot cheaper and a lot more simpler and still make it comfortable to live in. So build your van to your own needs and your own requirements. If you want to follow along with our detailed build videos, I've got a dedicated playlist that I'll put the links for that in the description below. I'll also put a link up here at the top of the screen if you want to go and watch those videos. All of the equipment that's in our van is put together on a parts list. There's a free PDF download in the description below. If there's anything in our van that you're interested in purchasing or you like the look of and you want to put it in your van, there's a free PDF down there with a full parts list and all of the links to where we purchased all of our equipment. If you like following us and watching our videos, then please do give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed because we put out videos every week on van building and van life. And it just remains for me to say thanks very much for watching. Take care and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.